witches, Tiffany here. We've got another book review. Today I'm going to be talking about The Path of Paganism by John Beckett. Now, I warn you right off the bat, this is going to be a little bit more of a biased review because I absolutely love this book. It is one of the best, best introductory books on paganism that I've ever come across. I'm kind of pissed I didn't come across it sooner on my own path. <laughs> This is, it's gonna be my new like go-to recommendation book when people are like, hey, I'm thinking about paganism, what should I read? So one of the big issues that I know we've all run into when it comes to introductory books is that most of them come from a Wiccan perspective. You know, you have Scott Cunningham, you have Buckland, you have a bunch of books published by Llewellyn that are mostly written by Wiccan authors. And now there's nothing wrong with that, but if you're not sure if Wicca is right for you or if you know that Wicca is not what you're trying to explore, it can be hard to find a more just general pagan introductory book. It also sets this precedent that, you know, especially for those who are very brand brand new and don't know the differences, it set this, sets this precedent that Wiccan rules or the Wiccan tradition equals pagan rules or the pagan tradition. There was a lot of things when I started my path that I was doing that I thought this is a pagan thing and it turned out, no, this is a Wiccan thing. Again, I have nothing against Wicca. It's just not necessarily the right fit for everybody and it is nice to have other alternatives so you're not reading all these Wiccan sources and going, okay, but this is Wiccan, so how much of this is pagan and how much of it is specifically Wiccan? So the author of this book, uh, John Beckett, he's actually a druid, although he does say that he has explored multiple different pagan traditions and paths throughout his, you know, entire pagan history or time being a pagan, and you get what I mean. So it does completely remove Wicca from the equation, although he does reference it a few times, of course, but he talks about the pagan path as the title implies in a general sense. For the most part, it is very neutral or non-tradition specific. At times he will reference certain paths, certain traditions. He will specify if something is unique to him and his craft, but for the most part, it's very general. Also, I do want to let you know that he does have a blog you can access online called Under the Ancient Oaks. First of all, it's very informative, but also it'll give you a good sense of what his writing style is like. So you can kind of see if it's to your taste before, you know, actually like going and buying the book. I didn't see it too often, but I did catch a couple of reviews that were saying like, oh, it's too dense. His writing style is not for me personally. I enjoyed his writing style. It was casual, but not too casual. And I didn't find the book dense whatsoever, but you know, it's like to each their own. It's a, it's a very subjective thing. The paperback book is 336 pages. Um, it, it's a good read, but it's not this like crazy overwhelming length, but it's not one of those ones that I'll tell you like, ah, oh, I read it in like an afternoon. I didn't, it took me longer than that. <laughs> So even though I warned you that it was going to be a little bit biased, I'll still break this up into my pros and cons section, although it is going to be like cons. So for the pros, first of all, the way the book is organized, the overall outline for it makes all of it very easily digestible, both as far as like the information being broken down for an absolute beginner, but also making it easily digestible so it's smooth reading. Again, it's not it's not a big academic piece, but it's also not like loose and casual like some of the other books I've recommended, like uh, Advanced Magic for Beginners. You know, that one's very jokey, it's very short, very, very, you definitely feel like you're sitting and like bullshitting with a friend when you read that one. This one feels more like a casual like afternoon lecture. Not even lecture, I feel like that's too strict of a word. But anyway, the outline of the book, the way it's organized does make it very, clear. He unfolds things at a decent pace and at, a, at an appropriate pace. 
for, again, someone who's either an absolute beginner or somebody who does have a little bit of experience under their belt. As an example of this, he starts off, you know, after the foreword and the introduction, Beckett talks about uh, what is paganism, what is the religious experience within paganism, which even if you're experienced, I highly recommend you read these sections, don't skip over them, they're very interesting. And I do love the way, the, the thoughtfulness and the phrasing that he uses to talk about it. But then he talks about the different types of paganism. And now he's not talking about specific traditions, practices, or pagan religions, but more what he calls the big tent of paganism. And I love this because he breaks it down into these four sections. That's nature-centered, self-centered, deity-centered, and community-centered. And he, there's actually like a this complex Venn diagram in the book that shows like a lot of these overlap. The, okay, now the thing I love about this, um, I know I'm kind of getting sidetracked with my point about how the book is organized, but the thing I love about this is he doesn't just talk about, well, there's Wicca and well, there's heathenry and there's this and that and all the, no, he's instead talking about how an individual goes about practicing paganism. Like, yes, you can look at this, this Venn diagram and apply it to a specific tradition or a specific path, but you can also look at it and see how it applies to your individual path. Because everybody's exploration into paganism, everybody's practice of paganism is different. And everybody's practice also evolves and changes over time. So like for a long time, my practice, like the circle that is deity centered, would I wouldn't even touch on that circle for the first, what, like four or five years of my practice. But now it is seeping in there a little bit. My, it, my practice is evolving and changing. My spirituality is evolving and changing. And so I love that this is the way that he chooses to break this down. You can look at it from the perspective of a, you know, very specific individual pagan, as opposed to a pagan who is a practitioner of fill in the blank. It's no, it's you specifically. Because even within specific traditions, no two practitioners are gonna be the same. Like no two Wiccans are gonna have the exact same practice. So I hope that made sense. I don't know if my rambling did. So anyway, back to my point about the outline of the book. Yes, he starts off with the introduction and what is paganism? What does it mean to be a pagan um, as a religious practice? Um, or observance, what does it mean to be a pagan in a contemporary world, and how do we break down an individual's pagan views, pagan beliefs, pagan practices, so you, as a new pagan, can discover and flourish. Again, I don't know if I'm making sense. Anyway, he does all that before he then, of course, break down, breaks down what does it mean to be nature-centered? What does it mean to be deity-centered? How do you work with a deity? You know, he goes into all of that. Another pro is that at the end of each section, he asks questions. These are really, really good for helping someone find their place in paganism, especially when you have so much info and so many paths floating around or like coming at you with every Google search you do. The questions he, he asks really help you start to narrow down your specific practice. What interests you? What speaks to you? What do you want to apply to your practice? And what do you want to maybe set aside for later or just kind of discard entirely? With these questions, he basically helps you discover what your paganism is, what your own unique style of paganism is. He also provides exercises that pretty much do the same thing and help you maybe dabble in certain areas where you're not sure if it interests you or not. Maybe you don't want to commit to deity yet, but like you want to kind of reach out, communicate with someone and just dip your toe in and, and see what's going on there. With that said, that's another reason why this book isn't just for beginners necessarily. 
But like I said, all of us, our paths, our practices are always changing and growing. So if you have an area that you never really explored, but now it's starting to speak to you, it's starting to intrigue you and you do want to explore it, there's probably a section in this book for you. The final thing I want to say for the pros is that John Beckett is very realistic and he is very non-judgmental. There is no mention of pagans don't do this fill in the blank or pagans all pagans fill in that blank. He also understands because you know I think we've probably all had that experience where we've been in a forum or on a subreddit or on a Facebook page dedicated to paganism or witchcraft or what have you and you've seen the comment from the person, the gatekeeper, and they've said something like, oh we don't do that. Or if you were a real pagan you would be a vegan or you would never shop here or you would never live in the city or I don't know whatever you know there's there's people out there like that but he really goes the extra mile by straight out saying you don't have to be ashamed if you if there's something you just can't do so one example of this is the section where he talks about living by your own values and he uses Walmart as an example. Like we, we all know that Walmart, Walmart's a big corporation. It doesn't treat its employees the best. It puts small businesses out of business. It can keep its costs low by cutting corners in other areas. So we all know like Walmart's not the best ethical choice when it comes to shopping. But he points out that not everybody has the means to go and, and shop at the local family owned store where, yeah, the employees are treated better, but the prices are higher. Like if you have the means to shop there, by all means, do it. But not everybody does. And that's not necessarily because they're lacking, you know, morals. They just literally can't afford it. So like I said, he's just, he's very, very realistic. And he sums up that section saying, you know, do your best to live by your own values, uphold your own values in the, your day-to-day -day life as much as possible. But there's no shame in being limited at times. And I just thought that that was a very empathetic viewpoint to have for that sort of thing. And, and much more realistic. Okay, so here are the cons that are like, more like cons, like they're not really cons, but I, I figured I have to put something in this section <laughs> so it's not just like all praise. So I did see some reviews of people saying that the book was kind of preachy and judgmental, which personally, I did not agree with those reviews, but you know, it's a subjective opinion. So you might agree with those reviews and not mine. I, I just, threw, I'm throwing it out there. The other, another one is that I did say that, yeah, if you're more experienced, you might get something out of this, but keep in mind for the most part, this is very much a beginner's book. That doesn't make it a bad thing. Again, it's like a con, but not a con. I know I'm really like grasping at straws here, <laughs> but to be honest, you know, me reading it now, I didn't get a whole lot out of it that I didn't already know. I still found it to be a very refreshing read and I found it to be a, a, an enjoyable read, but I didn't really learn a whole lot out of it, but that's only because of where I'm at in my path. He, there's still a ton of valuable information in there. I just already knew it all. <laughs> and like I said, I wish I had found this earlier in my journey because it would have saved me a lot of time and a lot of confusion on Google. So it's also definitely an overview, which again, not really a bad thing, but if you're looking so I mentioned uh, there's the section about working with deity. Well, if you're looking for like more information about specific pantheons or a specific god, specific goddess, specific mythology, this is in the book with that. You know, if you're looking to discover more about a specific tradition or path, this isn't the book for that. But it definitely will help you set up your own strong pagan foundation, which you need before you start branching off into these more specific areas if you go into paganism with, you know, not a whole lot of knowledge and not really sure where you want to start. 
And just in general, like I said, it's an overview, so it will give you kind of a taste of what these different areas are about. So going back to working with deity, the book will help you start exploring those areas with exercises, and it will explain to you uh, what it's like to work with a patron deity, but it won't say like, if you're interested in this, research this god. If you're interested in that, research this goddess, or that pantheon, or that culture. Like, it doesn't go into any of that. Again, not really a con, but more of just a heads up. But yeah, my bias is completely showing with this one. I really, really enjoyed this book and I highly recommend it. So the link for it is down below in the description box. That's it for today, which is let me know your thoughts on this book. If you've already read it yourself, whether you agree or disagree, if you agree, give me that thumbs up. And if you're like, no, this book was terrible and you're wrong, give me the thumbs down. If you've already read the book, leave a comment below and let me know what your favorite part was. But that is all for now, which is enjoy the rest of your week. I will see you on Sunday.